would you say then there's the dream scenario? Like if it was Nevada in the research you do, what would be that Nevada finding? Yeah, and that gets back to your earlier question. So, so yes, music is uh, very helpful for uh, creating stability, um, for reducing the likelihood of adverse reactions, uh, creating calm where needed. Uh, but it also has the potential to enhance the in intensity and benefits of, of the therapy. So uh, you're, you, you raise the, the idea that uh, you know, with music, you might need less drug uh, to arrive at the same beneficial state. And this has been used in, in pain therapies, for example. There is um, pretty strong evidence that, that having music involved in post-treatment, post-operative uh, treatments uh, uh, can lead to the need for less uh, analgesics. Um, like morphine and so on. So there is that model where music can kind of play this role where you need less drug to achieve the same state. Perhaps the same thing can happen here. So music can help enable these states of uh, consciousness and, and experience that are therapeutically valuable with less drug. Um, and that of course reduces the chances of adverse reactions I think that the dream state, actually, from the perspective of wave pass, is that music, the music is so good and so tuned in to what you need that that you don't need any psychedelic drug actually to to achieve the the states that that are really beneficial. And this goes back to ideas around, for example, you know, mother ease and you know, parent child vocalizations where. Uh, you know, the, the parent is vocalizing in ways that are continually attuning themselves to the child to keep the, the child in a state, uh, a positive state. And can you imagine a system that's um, you know, tuned in to uh, what you need and, and to deliver music that's just suited for arriving at, at states of mind and, and experience that, that are really helpful and, and beneficial? It's very interesting what you say, because what, what I believe in when it comes to medicine and depression and healing is why wait until we have the pain and we have the problem? Like music is a huge part of our life from the day we are birthed and even in the stomach because we can hear the, the heartbeat of the mother that it can be used to not end up in depression or getting some kind of other mental health diseases in the future that we use it constantly in in our daily lives and that's how i see that music as, as i say it has saved my life is like everybody else uh, i was hit by depression when i or anxiety when i was 20 and working in the event industry I later on, like 10 years later, when I started doing music research, I actually found out by myself, it's like it, music really helped me a lot and that I use it in my daily life. It won't forever cure me because I will be suffering from anxiety, uh, but I can use it as a tool whenever I feel bad to bring me up again. and. And this, what do you think about that, to use it constantly in your daily life to, to mm. prevent uh, mental health? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, I think it's, it's uh, definitely a powerful uh, you know, tool or a powerful you know, support uh, available to us. And well, we're surrounded by music and uh, access to music and uh, we can take advantage of that. And it's, uh, you know, it definitely has these, these effects implicitly. Uh, uh, we've talked about that in, in the context of you know, consumer neuroscience. Uh, music is influencing us, whether we are paying attention or not. And we can use that to our advantage and uh, find music that's soothing, find music that's energizing. I mean, this is, it's part of, sports 
in psychology now. It's in thinking about how to use music to get better outcomes for, for athletes uh, and for people that want to calm down. There's plenty of uh, playlists out there that, that play calming music. It's amazing how effective it is, um, how much it, it can change the way we're feeling. And it's just, now it's just a button press away, but maybe making that leap or you know, trying it is, uh, there are still barriers to that. Uh, and especially when we're in a difficult state of mind, we don't think, we're not thinking well at those moments, we're not at our best to, to do what's help, most helpful for ourselves. Uh, so it's good to make these things available, as available as possible. And, uh, and, then, and then talking about it as well and keeping it top of mind. So maybe it will come to mind it's like, wow, I'm kind of feeling agitated. I feel so concerned about what's happening or what just happened. And yeah, I could take a few deep breaths and, and listen to something interesting or put it on the background uh, just to just to create a, a different atmosphere for myself. And, and before we're talking about in the con uh, context of consumer neuroscience, that how uh, powerful music is when it comes to the memory and that is so interesting uh, when I saw a YouTube clip about a man that had Alzheimer's and he had not been able to communicate or move at all for years. Um, and then this team comes in and they ask his relatives, so what kind of music did he listen to when he grew up? What kind of music did he like when he was you know, older? And then they put together a, a tape uh, and then they put on headphones on him and he's in the beginning like non-communicative and then when he starts listening you just see the eyes you know are, are becoming bigger and he's just more alert and then he starts talking he can even uh, respond to questions which he couldn't do he remembers things from his life which was more challenging and then on top of that, now during that, now the period of time, I saw an Instagram that is a video that is circulating and the account is Musica para Desperata, it's, it's a Spanish, where we can see like an ex-ballerina that has Alzheimer's and she gets the chance to listen to swan music from where she was dancing and you can see instantly she's moving her hands, she's dancing almost exactly while she's sitting down, but with her arms like she did before. And oof, I get goosebumps by just talking about it. So excited. So explain to us this phenomenon. Right, right. Yeah, this is wonderful. And I've seen that video and there, there's a wonderful documentary, Alive Inside, that uh, explores music, uh, the effect of music on people with advanced Alzheimer's. And that's a great uh, thing to see uh, if you can. So, so what happens with music is it has all these structural features that make it very sticky in the brain, so to speak. It has rhythm, it has a melodic structure, it has harmonic structure, uh, and then when it has lyrics or, or vocals, it can have uh, vocal timbre uh, and also lyrical structure. Uh, so rhyming, it's words themselves, patterns, imagery associated with the words. So all of these aspects of the music uh, basically are very uh, useful. They're like grip holds for the brain and the brain is constantly looking for pattern and in information and building predictions. And this enables music related memories to be very deeply ingrained. Uh, and you see this, uh, it's, even when there's enormous degradation to the functioning of the brain, uh, loss of so many other functions, music can still access uh, the self uh, in people uh, with advanced Alzheimer's, for example. And uh, it, it's, it really does create some of the most enduring memories and uh, nostalgia is very powerful with music in particular. It can, trigger, uh, send us to a different time and place. Uh, so th this, you know, this is, this is one of the reasons music is such a, an interesting and powerful instrument. 
um, if you'll pardon the pun. So it, it also plays into psychedelic therapies in this way. Uh, there's uh, an integration process. So if you undergo a psych psychedelic therapy session, um, you will have some integration afterwards. So these experiences are often ineffable, hard to describe, and hard to remember. And afterwards, uh, usually part of the, the integration process is to remember everything that you, you experience and try to kind of bring it into your, your life, uh, kind of like remembering dreams sometimes. But the, the music may help with that process um, because music, as we were just talking, creates these opportunities for tagging memories, uh, you know, just like you might hear music and you'll be transported to you know, some drive you were on cross country when that music was on the road or you know, some event in your life that was meaningful. Uh, so too, uh, having varied and interesting music during a session may act as uh, kind of a, a time series or give time stamps to these different experiences. So when the person listens to that music after the fact, it brings to mind, it helps to uh, create this recollection process that then can lead to greater insights and, and a stronger integration of, of the experiences.